Who knows what Jay-Z, J.K. Rowling, Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey all have in common? Okay, I will tell you then. They have all overcome failure in one shape or form to go on to gain success in their respective careers. Welcome to My Perfect Failure. Join us as we delve into the world of our perfect failures. We will interview, explore, and discuss how our perfect failures can lead us to success. Join us and tune in. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of My Perfect Failure. Today, we have another amazing guest for you. So my guest today is an AC Certified Advanced Coach practitioner trained in mindfulness and neuroscience but his apprenticeship started way back growing up as a rap kid moving from place to place gave him an involuntary master class in adaptability resilience and rapport and connection building not to mention active listening and reading the room in what often felt like a survive or thrive scenario he decided to thrive Today, he unleashes the genius and the potential of entrepreneurs, leaders, and creatives through the power of deep coaching and music. And music is his is in his bones. He loves everything about it, how it transports you to memory and emotions, how it challenges and uplifts everything. And as a DJ from for over 20 years, he cannot deny the performance buzz. It gives him but nothing has delighted him more than the power that he's brought to his coaching call it a rapid transformation call it techno transformation if it grabs you all he knows is it's kind of magic so a very 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 warm welcome to my perfect failure disco dave win i mean just i've been dying to say that all day disco <laughs> dave win <laughs> And maybe for more than a day since we've spoken. I love I love that. Oh, it's thank you, man. Thank very, you. Very, very unique. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, man. You know, it's wonderful to hear that reflected back to me. Mm. Um, and yeah, I was just smiling as you were as you were speaking that out and kind of speaking me into this space in that way. It was really beautiful, man. Thank you. Yeah. No, I I love what you what you're doing i i before we hit the record button so i researched a little bit of for this but i don't like to do such everything because i like the discovery as well so i like kind of you know there are little things here that i'm eager to ask you and to unravel and be a, a point of discovery for me mm, um beautiful but yeah so i'm excited to have this conversation but for everybody listening the title of this episode is How I Discovered My True Gifts Through Adversity. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing now is and fabulous. And I love you've got an amazing community. Dominique was the is a mutual friend that connected us together. I love what she does and some some of her friends that I've met as well. And you are I, I I always marvel when I meet one of you. There's such an amazing community. I, I feel blessed to <laughs> to know you all and to be able to bring you guys into my world so so, so thank you disco dave <laughs> and Dominic. oh um, thank you man so so where i'd like to begin if if we may maybe kind of at the beginning so mm. I, I didn't realize that your background rap kid i guess moving from place to place i think about me when i'm at school how tribal kids are we we know our set and whenever you do something new or you go to a different school always a little bit nervous so I can imagine that being somewhat disconcerting as a young child but what was it like being a, a rap kid yeah you were we moved once every few years I think so it became normal in a way but it was always difficult yeah and there were there were a couple of spells. Well, I think the longest spell we stayed anywhere was about five years. And that was fortunately for me from when I was, because I finished school in Scotland, but did my first year of school in Wales. And then I did, what was that, six or seven years in Germany, but at two different schools because we stayed in two different places. So I was fortunate in a way that 
when we moved, we moved at times where I was going to be moving school anyway, which okay. is which made it easier. But you know, you're having to leave friends behind, go to a totally new place, and the whilst that was difficult because I think it's, it's difficult for everybody as they kind of move mm. up in the world in that way. Um, because we were in always in these sort of R- RF communities, everyone was in it together. So there yeah. was this beautiful sense of community. And that's one of the things I always kind of look back on fondly about those experiences where, you know, we didn't have a huge amount of money or anything. It was pretty humble. Um, but we, got to go on lots of cool trips that most people I know wouldn't you know have ever had experience of because we were living in different places and it was something really really beautiful about how connected we felt because one of the other challenging parts about that time was the nature of my dad's job he would literally be out of our lives for six months at a time on what was called detachments. So, and that's pre-internet and, you know, he's in environments like Iraq and and other interesting parts of the world. And the only way we could communicate was through these, we called them blueies. So they were these airmail letters that you could send. So you'd get an airmail letter in the post every now and then. Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I think I because my mum's from Barbados and I think it's the same thing when she used to write a letter to her mum or to her cousin or something it would be in this blue envelope yeah same it's thing. like Is that the same was, thing I think so yeah it's like a blue light blue bit of paper and then it had like a red white and blue chevron yeah, around yeah. the border think, and they'd fold yeah, it up yeah, and send it yeah 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 so and there was you, you couldn't really speak because it was it would have been so expensive to call mm. internationally to these you know far off locations. So, and it was always challenging when Dad would come home as well because he was the sort of dominant authority figure in our house. Yeah, and there'd be literally months where he wouldn't be there, and Mum would be the one who would have to look after us. But it was it was still I guess a community effort. But dad would come in and he would then have to sort of reinsert himself yeah. as the authority figure in the house. And there was always tension around those times. Mm. And then just before, it was about a month before my 13th birthday, this was May 94, my mum and dad. So I've got two younger sisters, uh, twins, who are just under a couple of years younger than me. And they sat us down in our living room and basically dropped this bomb on us that they were going to be separating. Oh. and we had, I mean, absolutely no clue that this was even a mm. possibility. We were living this like really actually nice life for mm. us. Um, and because we didn't have a physical place to call home, our home was our family unit together. Yeah. And then all of a sudden that was taken away. So, and not only that, we were going to be moving to Scotland somewhere we'd never been before. We didn't know anyone here. And we were going to have to do that as separate families. And mum and dad asked me and my sisters who we wanted to live with. Really? So we had to make How that choice in the moment. Question? Like, I know, right? It was um, incredibly difficult. My mom, my sisters immediately chose my mum. And in that moment, I, I felt this incredible sense of guilt towards my dad. Yeah, yeah. And I actually only really processed that a few years ago as part of this amazing breathwork experience that I had where I literally felt something click in my abdomen and it was like a release from all those years ago. And I suddenly felt like this guilt I'd been carrying for 25 years had just gone. It was amazing. Um, Yeah, literally, it was one of the most wild, strange, esoteric experiences I've ever had. And 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 just out of interest, did you do mm. the breath work for that exercise, or was it just that you wanted to do breath work? I was just curious about it. So okay. this was um, just go quickly fast forward. Then, so that was twenty. I think it was twenty nineteen. So just before COVID, I'd done my coach training. I was starting to be exposed to different modalities and different, yeah. just different stuff and. Some of the people that I trained with in the community that I was in, um, breath work was part of their practice. So I was just like, right, this is just something new I want to try. So I didn't really have an intention. It was just curious to experience it. Mm. And this amazing just release came out of it. And it was 
Yeah, incredible. Because since then, so if we go back, um, so the next few years were, especially the next couple of years, from sort of from 13 to 15 were probably the most challenging of my whole life because we just felt so disconnected. I certainly felt so disconnected because moving to Scotland, a, a really small city, it's it's only a city because it's got a cathedral, so it's a town oh, between, you, sorry. In between Aberdeen and Inverness. So it was a little place called Elgin. Oh, no, no. Yeah. And we, I did not feel welcome at all because they were very, it was a sort of very small minded community, yeah. English people not welcome. Yeah. And, you know, like properly, like, <laughs> yes. who, who's this guy? And um, it was bullied a little bit, but because I had this incredible self defense mechanism that allowed me to fit in really quickly, I was able to just slip into being one of them yeah. um, because I'd had all this, basically all this training that yeah. led me to be able to deal with this really challenging okay, okay. experience. Okay, so that moving about came into came into play because you was able to take mm. those skills that you learned from moving to place to place and it yeah. all came into play. Yeah, because ultimately when you're, when you're a kid and you're going through some really seismic change in your life, all you want is to feel safe. Mm. That, so that's all you're ever doing is looking for how can I feel safe in this? And that, and I'd had plenty of practice of that, of basically the chameleon yeah. doing what I need to do to fit in to feel safe. And that was a gift that I was able to carry on, except the irony is that, and this is, I think, true for most people really, that once you become an adult, the key to one of the keys to success is actually being able to turn that mechanism of staying safe and fitting in into standing out. Okay, okay. And standing out, that invariably is that uncomfortable because we're we're having to I don't know this. I'm 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 surmising. <laughs> it is uncomfortable based upon what beliefs you're carrying as a result of okay. your experiences growing up okay and and most of us are have this inbuilt fear of standing out mm. because fear has basically kept us safe as a race for mm. thousands of generations yes because you know when you go back through human history the people who stood out were the ones that died because they would be ostracized from their tribe or they, mm. they would be seen as a threat and they would be killed. So we ha we have all these fear based genes that have been passed on to us, yeah, through lots of generations. So we're we're battling that biology, and yeah. at the same time, we're at this incredibly unique point in human history where it's actually okay to stand out. It's it's actually safe to stand out now, because yeah. we're not going to be the dangers that are present now or were present back then are not really present yeah. anymore. Yeah, that's really interesting and. Mm. So it is safer to stand out now, but do you think a lot of us are still steeped in that fear of standing out? Absolutely, and and I've had those fears as well. And if I, I've, I, I like to say everyone's got their own flavor of it. Yeah. And my flavor of fear was, I was afraid to be successful because I had a belief that success would cause me to be it would take me away from the people that I love okay okay yeah. because of the demands that success could bring on my yeah. time and the most important thing for me as a as a parent in particular and as a husband is these people these beautiful mm. people that I have in my house with mm. me because eventually what happened with my family my so my dad my mom my sisters all of our relationships broke down like every single one and so my biggest fear through that was losing the the bonds of the people that were closest to me because that was so painful and so consistently painful over time and and looking back 
but again, looking back, you know, my my own, I guess, like positive energy. I call it my disco buzz these days. Um, but my my positivity, my innate positivity, is really rooted in an insight that I had when I was about fifteen, and I was staying with my mum at the time. I used to go and stay with my mum in the holidays, and we were visiting some friends and I just remember I got really upset. I was just, it was basically the last throes of my attachment to how things were. Cause I remember having this conversation with my mom where I'm literally saying, why can't we just go back to how things were like literally just speaking this out loud yeah. and then te- floods of tears. And when I've been able to reflect on that, what I can observe is that when that pain stopped was when I finally accepted that things are never going to go back. But then in that acceptance, something really beautiful emerged. And it was this idea that, okay, bad shit happens. It doesn't last forever. The bad times, they don't last. And after that is when good times come again. That was how I articulated it in my teenage brain. And what what I realized, but didn't realize at the time, was I could see that everything's temporary for the first time. And that was, I didn't realize how profound that was until um, probably only the last like four or five years where um, I was actually in a a mindfulness teacher training program. And I told this story to the, the teacher and he said, he stopped me and he said, do you realize how rare that is? Like, 20 people could have had that experience and not had that same insight. And I was like, whoa, no one had ever framed it that way for me before. And I was like, wow, that's, I have a new appreciation for that and for myself in that way and, and in that moment, because that insight helped me to see, okay, well, if, if bad times are coming, then I need to enjoy the good times as much as possible mm-hmm. and also not dwell on the bad because I know the bad shit happens, but it's not going to last. I'll get through it. And then we'll be back in the good times again. And I'll I'll enjoy that. So that kind of formed this positive attitude, gratitude for, for life in general, that actually the challenging moments as well as the other more vibrant, beautiful moments. So like what an incredible gift to, to have been given through the most difficult period of my life. Yeah. I agree with the coach or lecturer, whoever you referenced a second ago, because what you described there is something that I think an awful lot of people now globally would benefit from hearing that because when we encounter bad times and we all do, mm. it's difficult. How, how old were you? 15, did you say? Yeah, like 14, 15, because I remember it was about a year and a half or two. Yeah, 14, 15, to have that clarity of thought, to be able to articulate that, process that. You're going through so much, but to to be able to articulate that, frame it, and move move forward with a a sense of perspective Mm. is profound. That piece of his content needs to be shrink ramped (laughs) and we use that as a sound bite because (laughs) everybody should listen to that it's one of those ones that people can have on you know i can imagine tony robbins saying on instagram or something so yeah Mm. so that's 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 brilliant and and just a point of clarity so just going back to when your parents gave you the option of living with either Mm. your sisters went with your mum and you 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 went with your mum or dad I went with my dad. You went with your dad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he'd met another woman. So there was this new family. She had a son who was a couple of years younger than me. Mm. So we then are in this house together, like trying to gel. And there was at least a couple of occasions where I I packed a bag and nearly ran away from Mm. home because like, it was just, it was painful and difficult and, yeah really really Mm. challenging do you as you've gone through that now when I read your bio I spoke a lot about a lot I I read some words adaptability some of them you've already displayed in what you've said so far but adaptability 
clearly you're unable to adapt. You've done that your entire life. Resilience was resilience at play in those difficult moments when you're going, moving from, from your mother and your sisters to Scotland and you're having to be quite, not quite, incredibly resilient dealing with a new situation. Was that coming into play, do you think? Definitely. And there's an amazing reframe uh, that I was given around resilience a few years ago. And it's this idea that we consider resilience to be bouncing back from something, mm. right? But when we consider that we have a choice as to where we want to bounce back to, mm, yeah, like that that's then reinvention, really. And that was one of the that was one of the opportunities I think that were all that were available to me through those experiences was you know you move to a new place and you could basically be a new person if you want to and you don't get many of those experiences in life I think you do more so most people probably do as an adult especially in a career if you move companies there's an opportunity to be someone different if you want to um but most people don't take that opportunity because they end up reverting back to old patterns of behavior and they don't really you know, kind of deal with their shit mm. for want of a better yeah. phrase we're just not practical or a lot of us just aren't prepped i guess it might be a couple of things actually as i'm about to say something i'm questioning myself so do you think <laughs> it's sometimes that we're not practiced in how to bounce back or how to really manage situations or, or maybe sometimes we just don't know how to yeah maybe i think it's both. i think it's both it's it's more that we just haven't had an experience we mm. haven't had someone tell us mm. um you know I'm, i feel so mega grateful that the experiences i've had in the last what's that been sort of six years or so um six or seven years now i've learned and grown and expanded so much mm. and it's my my openness to learning is expanded immeasurably mm. but it's only through adversity that you then start to see uh, maybe something needs to be different here maybe ideally the point to get to is maybe I need to be different or how can I be different? How can I take control and shape what I'm experiencing? Mm. Because most people tend to look outwards. Mm. They look outside of themselves for yeah. whether it's blame or, I mean, that's kind of what, you know, I was doing, you know, as a kid, um, you know, it was, I'm having all these hard experiences and, you know, and, until you can start to take some personal responsibility, which is it's a hard thing to do. But the minute you can make that switch, great you, things can happen. People listening that mm. maybe are in a situation and they're struggling to, maybe deep down they know that there's something afoot and maybe that involves them having that acceptance do you have any tips for them in terms of maybe a how to recognize it and maybe how to lean into it and really to, to push them forward yeah absolutely questions are the answer mm. so some of the questions that immediately come to mind are what how did i create this What am I avoiding? What can I take responsibility for that I'm not currently owning? What, what or where can I find acceptance where I'm not currently? When we can move to some form of acceptance of our circumstances and, and what's going on, the reality, then 
we can we can move into forgiveness so can i forgive myself for creating this because when we you know if we think about resentment for example when we hold resentment or self judgment or any kind of judgment all that does is it causes us pain like we're we're blaming someone else but that's not changing them it's not affecting that other person all it's doing is affecting us and our internal state and our energy so the moment we can find acceptance and and then forgive ourselves for that and be kind to ourselves ultimately and show love for ourselves then we can start to make some really powerful shifts and then from there we can start to move into a, a space of possibility so from there so if i'm like coaching someone for example if i've supported them around this then once they're ready then and i might i might go there before all of that because one of my favorite questions is given the situation or given the problem what would you love to create and most people don't realize this incredible capacity that they have that we all have to create mm. and getting into creation getting into that space of possibility it's beautiful because when you can start to imagine something new something better then <clears throat> You know, what's going on in the brain we're starting to tap into that beautiful biology we have in our brains the the good feeling chemicals and we can start to bring a different sense and and feeling and emotion into our body that we can then use as energy to then go and take action yeah, yeah but everyone okay. exists on so when I first, well, just around the time when I did my coach training, I had this insight around people and possibility. And I could see people are at different points and it, it, they appeared on a spectrum to me. And I, so I called this the spectrum of possibility, where at one end, you've got the black hole where people are so entrenched in their comfort, they can't see beyond the event horizon. They can't see any mm. possibility beyond their current reality. And then once you start to give someone an experience of possibility, they start to move beyond that and towards the light. And at the other end, you've got people who just have an abundance of possibility. It's just possibility everywhere. But the challenge over here is that with that much possibility, what do you actually do? Confuse them. Yeah, right? There's so much choice. Where, where do you want to put your time, attention, and energy? So there's challenges all the way across the spectrum which is beautiful in itself yeah yeah i love those questions by the way i love those questions <laughs> so anybody listening what what amazing questions that we can just ask ourselves because they're, they're really insightful questions but once you've i guess engaged those questions and start dealing with them they they kind of uplift you they kind of give you hope because they're they're not because they're the right questions. They're they're questions that if you're in a tunnel and a black, I think you, you I think you referenced it. If you're in a black hole, then the, those questions give you light, mm. so you can really think. So they're in, inspire amazing questions, but inspiring as well. I love them. Yeah, and that's and there's a big difference between feeling inspired and and motivated. Yeah, because motivation we almost have to get energized mm. we have to give energy to motivation mm. it has to like we have to like muster it. we because we even talk about that the language you, we use is you know get motivated it's like we have to create <laughs> it ourselves right <laughs> wind but, wind us up at the back with, with a... totally but when we're inspired we feel inspired it's like energy comes into us from yeah. somewhere else and it's it's a far more sustainable energy source mm. that we can utilize to then do more yeah and yeah so I, I love that and i think for everybody i'm sure people listening would have picked that up as well those brilliant questions so something that you that you mentioned a couple of things when you talk about create and we have the opportunity to create, we should create, but we have the opportunity to create something that really 
engages us. And also, you earlier you mentioned about when you bounce back. Sometimes we talk about bouncing back. But what I loved about what you said, you talked about where am I bouncing back to? So there's more of a opportunity to not just bounce back, but bounce back with intention to do something mm. that really resonates with you. Is there is yeah. there is there a correlation between that bouncing back to and that's opposed to not just as opposed to not just bouncing back if I'm not com confusing myself and that having that element of creativity as well is there linkage there 100 percent. and before I explain why I'll also just say if whoever's listening I'd invite anyone to or invite the listener to take moments during this and notice what you notice for yourself if there's questions that we're sharing take time to reflect on them. This is a podcast. You can pause this. When it comes to this medium, I think people often listen to be entertained. But when I'm doing this, I love this to be about learning and for someone to learn something new about who they can be. So I just wanted to mention mm -hmm. that for anyone who's Thank listening, you. for you, the listener, please do take time to take value from us notice what you're noticing in my story and what we're talking about for yourself notice what you're noticing about your current circumstances noticing what you're noticing about where what we're talking about could be valuable for you so I just wanted to mention that I'm going to be doing a side <laughs> <laughs> awesome and so yeah absolutely it's linked because when we when we engage the learning part of our brain so by by considering just by simply considering a question so it's that's the difference between you know just labeling something and getting curious about it so if we if we're just going to bounce back well there's sort of like a knowing there we the brain, the learning part of the brain is not engaged. So if we can ask ourselves a question, that's what I love about questions, you know, where do I want to bounce back to? Mm. Boom. We're engaging a completely different part of our brain, the creative mm. part. We can tap into that imagination and start to see a new possibility, start to see and create a totally new reality that we can access, that we can then create. And the beautiful thing about the brain that I've learned, one of my favorite things about the brain is that the brain doesn't know the difference between an imagined reality and a physical reality yeah. which is super cool because then knowing that we can visualize we can imagine we can get playful with our thinking and start to just create something new and by doing that we can get our own brain to work for mm, us yeah. because of that filter that the brain has mm. it's amazing that, that's almost like magic isn't it because we mm. very often we don't really use our brains and we don't absorb and we accept thoughts and we don't realize that we can really serve our brain what we want to serve it but sometimes we just accept because we're just not taught at school potentially because people that teach us don't know this either Mm. And maybe our parents don't either. And it's difficult to think think around the idea that we that there is another that there are other options, there are another way we can think differently. And I, I noticed when again reading part of your bio that neuroscience is part of what you how you work with your clients, which is which is wonderful because that is transformational. Mm, yeah, it's, well, I'm so grateful that that was part of my coach training because what I found was that I gained all these brilliant skills and framework and tools and they are transformative when you're with someone, but the neuroscience helps to explain why all this stuff works. Yeah. So then it embeds trust in somebody because, mm. you know, we're in the UK and most people in the UK haven't really experienced coaching. They haven't experienced 
powerful coaching, transform right, true transformational coaching. Most people's experience of coaching is uh, probably transactional. You know, it's have I've got a problem, fix the problem, surface level. Um, it's in a corporate environment. Yeah, um, t- yeah, absolutely. And you know, people haven't really had an experience of what coaching can create and you know the u.s market's different it's far more mature in that way you know people are very open about their challenges people have therapists they mm-hmm. they value these services that are available whereas we're we're catching up in the uk i think over the last few years we've made some great strides you know mm-hmm. i've seen people far more openly on tv social media talking mm-hmm. about mental health issues and challenges and that's beautiful because it's starting to normalize it a mm-hmm. bit more but we've still got a way to go to move people to a point where people have had enough of an experience to understand the value and then to know that this is worth investing mm. in. It's Yeah, that's really interesting as well, because when, I guess the thing about doing this podcast and meeting and connecting with fabulous people like you is that I learn, I get to learning now and I guess the thing that it's great that you've brought this to light, but it's, but it's a concern as well that without if if we don't understand that the information that we absorb that we put in our in our in our minds and where and a direction that leads us in in terms of our lives. I think very, very often without without that high clarity, without understanding our brains, we believe that that is the only way, that mm. there's not another way. Because we're not really, again, sort of labouring a point, but what I referenced earlier around the idea of using our brains and maybe not having been taught how to do that. So we accept the way, even if we've got deep down, we've got, you talked about, that creativity the idea of being creative and actually thinking about where we want to take our lives that bounce back ability where i want to take my take our lives sometimes we don't even believe that's possible so it's kind of like almost dormant somewhere Mm. and so that's why i'm i'm super delighted that you've you've discussed and you've raised this point because for people listening who maybe have thoughts and ideas and wants and desires that are a little bit dormant I think with working with somebody like you and and maybe embracing some of the even the questions that you've referenced today those dormant challenges can be ignited Mm, yeah absolutely and it blows my mind just even considering the possibility of what life could be like Mm. for human beings if people knew this stuff because this is at at the heart of it it's really high level communication skills that's what coaching is Mm. really as a as a as a as a modality and we can learn all this stuff like if you're a human being and you can communicate you can learn this stuff and it just takes curiosity and a willingness to practice and try and 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 going back to you know what you said about you know us not understanding really how to utilize our, our brains properly. If we consider that you know our hand is is here to serve us, our hand mm-hmm. we can direct our hand, it will always do what it doesn't ever fight back. It's not like trying to harm us, it's it's there for us all the time from the moment we learn to control it as a as a baby. Our brain's different. Our brain is, it's a tool, it's its a body part. It's meant to serve us. But there comes a point, particularly when we're about seven or eight, when this, so these, these two selves, the self one, the original self, and the self two, this created self starts to come in. It's the, it's the ego, it's coming to keep us safe. And it creates our personality as a personality that helps us to just blend in and, and not stand out because it's there to keep us safe. But our brain then starts to work against us in that way. There comes a point when, yeah, it, 
it will serve us to a point, but then particularly as adults, if we want to really create a life of, I would call abundant joy, happiness, mm. and because it is possible. Yeah. We have to work on, on this. Mm. We have to work on our mind and, and do the work to realize how this isn't serving us anymore. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the scary thing for me is that life comes and goes quite quickly. The years go quite quickly. And before we know it, we, I guess what I'm, I guess I don't want to be morbid actually, but I guess what I'm trying to say <laughs> is life isn't going forever and it yeah. can, and we can very, we can very easily live a, a long experienced life and we have never really touched that high creativity what we really want really what we wanted to do and that is a tragedy if we and we might not even and i think maybe deep down is there a maybe we never acknowledge it maybe yeah. i don't know i don't know I'm not, I'm not as wise as you but maybe we don't maybe there isn't a knowing deep down that mm, i never quite did what i wanted to do and but maybe you don't know that you, you were just never taught how to do it. So you you kind of challenge it a little bit, but not seriously. Yeah, definitely. And we're a product of our environment. You know, most people, our internal environment is affected by our external environment. Mm. But as a possibility, we as human beings have the ability to turn that on its head if we want to, if we want to do the work, we can get into a state where our internal environment, we create that first, and then that actually creates our external environment. Okay, okay, that's interesting. And what I mean by that practically is we can decide how we are going to show up each and every day to each situation and not allow those situations to dictate how they are going to make us feel yeah and really? okay powerful powerful like that yeah and and i'm not saying i'm there but i'm on the path mm. to get there mm. and more often than not now i have the ability to make a choice in those moments as to how i'm going to be mm. how i'm going to show up what i'm going to think what i'm going to feel i'm far more in control because i'm able to slow down particularly in moments of challenge and adversity I could just pause. I've learned to pause. Like the way I'm speaking to you is intentionally slower than I used to talk mm. because I learned that by slowing down generally, especially slowing down my thinking, I'm able to be in a calmer and far more creative okay. state. So I can access more of my cognitive abilities, my innate creativity but also there's a benefit for anyone who's listening mm. because if with me slowing down, it makes it easier for someone else to be able to take in what I'm saying and actually hear me and then find something in it for them mm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. And to your point, I think once we have that awareness, I think we're always on the path because we're always evolving. We're, we're never ever going to be the finished article which, yeah. which I actually think is a good thing because I think it's lovely to, to be able to keep on striving to to achieve and to do different things. Because if you if we hit a ceiling, then that's kind of like, what do we do now? <laughs> but, so it, it, it's, it's kind of nice once we get on the path to give ourselves that that freedom to to evolve and and, mm. and, and to move on. So I, I kind of want to get into the the music and how you found this gift so that came through adversity but it's led it's led to a remarkable life and i guess combination of things that you've managed to to mesh together what was mm. was music always there for you where, where did that come into play so music was there for me particularly it's funny my wife and i were speaking about this last night because we were watching um Glastonbury on BBC oh, right, right. and BBC One and 
we were talking about music from her past and experiences. And she was talking about how she had fond memories with her mom and road trips and listened to Elton John and other artists. And I said, yeah, I don't really have that so much because that time in my life where I was really starting to be interested in music, I was just having to go through my own shit basically, but yeah. music became this place for me to go and I guess feel safe, feel connected and to be able to not feel alone. And so music's always been with me. I used to make mixtapes. I listened to radio. Um, I remember one of the first bands I was into was Guns N' Roses and like the, just the anger and the rebelliousness and the music mm. totally resonated with, with me at that time. Cause that was right at the time when, you know, family stuff was all kicking off. And um, so yeah, music's been there from that point where I needed it the most. And I think that's why I could see there was something special in me being able to combine that with this other gift that I've been exposed to in coaching and, and really helping other human beings. And I've been a DJ for over 20 years and, and I kind of got into that just very serendipitously. I'd been doing some MC in a, in a pub that I worked in when I was sort of like 20, 21 and, um, some DJs who worked in the pub would see me doing this and the company that they worked for were looking for new DJs and they were willing to train me up. So I went and did like 10 months of training, going up, wow. up over, going to different gigs and building up my music collection mm -hmm. and just learning the ropes, but very hands-on. And it was, a, that was an amazing experience. And, and it gave me this incredible skill mm -hmm. that I could then take on and use and, and, yeah, so being able to combine the two things, like, it's just amazing. And when I, so when I found coaching back in 2016, so I was about to become a dad for the first time. And one of the things I carried with me from the experience of my family falling apart was this limiting belief that I can't have kids and not create the same painful experiences that I experienced. So I believed if I was going to become a parent, I was inevitably going to cause any children the same pain that I went through. And so that manifested in this kind of surface level thought and belief that I don't want to have children. That was, okay. that was what I was, you know, showing up mm -hmm. with. And fortunately my wife, she was, she was so keen to have kids that we had this really tense moment a couple of years into our relationship where it became very apparent, you know, what she was, what she wanted and what I was believing I wanted. And she, in her standing and what she wanted, she helped me to overcome my belief, which was amazing. It's something I'll forever be grateful for her because it allowed me to then step into more of myself without the fear and to step into more leadership actually. And so from there, 2016, I'm about to become a dad for the first time. And I have this big insight on holiday that I just, I need to help people for a living. I didn't, I didn't know about coaching at that point, but I'd read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it totally opened my mind to learning. And, and then a couple of months later, I met a guy that I, I knew and we had this amazing lunch and he tells me about his experience of finding coaching. And not only that, but he met his wife and they created this coaching academy and, um, with the lady that trained both of them. And he just blew my mind. I just had no idea coaching was a thing that you could do outside of sport. It was just this yeah. door had opened. And then when I eventually trained, I just felt like this is my thing. Like my life just felt like a series of one thing to the next, just constantly moving to the next thing, whether it was, you know, one place to another, one family to another, one career mm -hmm. to another. It was just transition all the way through. And then finally I'm given this thing that's like, this is what you were made for. This is the thing you were meant to do. It was just amazing. And it just fills me up every, like I feel myself smiling. I can, I can see it now, I see it. It's just the most amazing thing when you actually find what you're great at 
and you're able to live into it professionally, make a living from it and, and make a difference through it every day. It is just the most amazing thing. Because one of the things, that point where I was about four months away from becoming a dad and I'm having all these questions about what's really important to me. I'd never really thought long-term before. I'd always thought short-term, you know, what's the next experience? What's the next thing I'm going to do? What's Where's the next fun thing? But finally thinking long-term, that's one of the gifts that becoming a parent gave me, this amazing gift of perspective. You know, I was asking myself, well, what really fulfills me? Like what really brings me joy? And what kind of example do I want to set for my kids? Because I knew I could start to sense that becoming a parent, I wanted to learn from all the mistakes my parents made. I wanted to be present with them. Like that's the most important thing to me, which is why I felt like compelled to then go and work for myself. Cause then I could take control yeah. and, you know, I'm, I'm totally here for them. Um, I work from home and it's the most important thing for me to maintain that connection and give them as much of me that I can. And, but part of that involves doing things that fill me up, doing things that bring me joy, doing things that bring a sense of fulfillment. And then a couple of years ago, when I had this amazing experience with a, with a coach in the U S uh, with a 300 other leaders and coaches, a virtual event, and it was where I got really connected with being Disco Dave. And that had been a nickname I'd okay, had for... Really? Okay, okay. Yeah, it been a nickname I'd had for 20 years. And and even just how I ended up in that experience was, was fortuitous and kind of very s- synchronistic because my business part of the time, we'd started a business called Heart Centered Leaders. And we felt like we came together just through my own intuition. Mm. Like we'd had, we'd had lunch and I asked her if she wanted to create something together. Just literally this voice in my head said, do you want to create something together? And I said, I spoke those words and she said, yeah. And then um, she got a free ticket to this event and so, and she gifted it to me. So I got to have this experience with this guy that I'd been wanting to work with. And I showed up to, so committed and yeah, got an experience of, understanding that I've been wearing this David Wynn mask. I wasn't really being true to myself. Mm -hmm. I thought I had to be someone else to be successful. And I could see that I am Disco Dave. And then since then, and I I was also considering how do I combine what I love Mm -hmm. and how do I combine music and coaching? And then the answers just started to flow. And I just started to get these incredible experiences with different people. just explore my curiosity I learned that the word disco actually is Latin for I learn I practice I study I teach oh wow which blew my mind because I was I could see wow I've had this nickname for 20 years and it's actually the most perfect nickname I could have been given (laughs) for actually if you examine that 20 years ago Um, Even more than that, I got more curious and learned that my name David is Hebrew for beloved. And my surname Win means joy. So what my name literally means to me, I learn, I practice, I study, I teach being love and joy. Yeah. So that's that's another exercise people can do. They can look up then, look up either their names or maybe their nicknames in latin or hebrew and there might be some signs there well the the, the invitation is just to be curious mm, and be open yeah, and absolutely we're, we're meaning making machines and you know all of this is made up our names are made yeah. up our, 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 what we do is made up it yeah. came out of nowhere and came into existence and that's what i love about the experience that i've had and invite other people to do is that you can create your own meaning like your name even if it doesn't mean something, you could just make some shit up mm. and use that yeah. for you mm. to energize you because it was made up anyway. Mm. Yeah, t- absolutely. Because I think there is very often we, when we do become stuck, I think we can just become almost transfixed. Mm. And the ability, I think we almost become more 
anxious and desperate as opposed to being curious and to maybe think about curiosity I don't think we have that that default to be curious and that's why when you spoke earlier around coaching and about why it is important like you said the U.S. For years, they've just been really, it's a, it's standard. Yeah. You know, I'm going to see my coach, I'm going to see my therapist, and it's it's not even a thing. You just mention it over text, over lunch. I can't see you, at that, I don't know, whatever time, because I've got, I'm seeing my coach or, or whatever. And it's just standard. And I think in the UK, I don't know it like you, but it would be lovely to get to that point where people are utilising coaching because, you know, to my mind, if we really want to tap into who we really are and the potential to do things that we really will make us feel like you do with your coaching and with the, the music, that it is achievable, it is possible. And I think it's difficult to do things on our own. I think that's the reality. I mm. think coaches... You know, if we look at most people that we admire, I'm sure if we do this exercise and we think we look at a healthy proportion, most of them will have somebody that's there, that is their foil, that has given them the, the platform, the foundations to really blossom and be themselves. And th th their lives are totally enriched by that. And I think in the next five, 10 years, hopefully more people are just using coaches as a as a kind of like almost and not a thing mm. that makes sense yeah definitely and something you said uh when you said the word possibility it sparked something in me and what i feel collectively we need we could benefit from getting to is being enrolled in the possibility of ourselves and our lives and what we can create for ourselves but for others mm -hmm. and that's I think one of the distinctions I see between the culture in the UK and the culture in the US that people in the US in a way are more selfish yeah but it's in service of others yeah. and we have this exactly. cultural view that being selfish is negative and it goes back to when we're kids when we were growing up because and I've seen it with me and my girls you were born as selfish beings out of necessity because we're dependent on someone else for our survival and we have to learn how to socialize and to get on with other people and to move to a state of independence but what we the step we don't tend to make is realizing that being selfish we could even hyphenate the word by taking care of ourselves first by taking care of our energy mm. first we can better take care and serve others yeah yeah I, that's something that i need to think about as well because it's because yeah it's interesting having this conversation with you because i think I think in life we can very easily get lost mm. and a lot of um, a lot of the things that we can do to support ourselves kind of get lost mm. and when they get lost it's difficult to even not we might even realize they're lost because we've gone so far this way that mm. we've got that compound effect of just living a certain way so the idea of really looking after ourselves really putting ourselves for first but really being selfish so we can really ultimately support our family our friends whoever it may be so yeah so it's powerful stuff that you're that you've referenced today and it's but, but when i say power it's more than powerful stuff it's inspirational stuff it's stuff that it's, it's hopeful stuff it's stuff that everybody can take and really achieve what they want to achieve it's really i think we all can really look at where we are now if you listen to this episode now you can really look at where you are now ask yourself the questions that you referenced and actually think about where do i want to go 
and I think with the questions you that you reference is achievable when people are doing that should they be journaling that so they can re- or should what's the best way to absorb those questions and really to I guess to study it and to be intentional with it there are several ways journaling is great because journaling acts as a, a way to get our thoughts out so where people often get stuck so I, I had this insight for myself there's a difference between monologue and dialogue so monologue is that constant loop of thoughts in our head and what happens when we're just in our head is it goes round and round and round and particularly if it's negative thinking then that can bring more negative thinking and it can be a spiral and we can go into a pretty dark place I've been there and it feels like like a fog has descended and it's heavy and it's horrible and lonely mm. The moment you get those thoughts out, whether it's by speaking them or writing them, speaking them is the best way. Okay. So that's why having someone else, but even I love a coach called Michael Neal. He he says, even talking to a lamp post would be good for a person <laughs> <laughs> because it gets it out. And what happens when you get the thoughts out is it creates space for new thinking to emerge better quality thinking to emerge and that can come through journaling it can come through speaking it out loud i find as well walking is really helpful particularly when we're reflecting just having a question to reflect on just and it's about holding it lightly as well so not holding it heavily or taking it too seriously but just holding it lightly with a sense of curiosity and wonder and just having a question always putting it to the back of your mind just allow it to sit there and and just melt away and through that particularly when we're moving that's what i love about i run i've run consistently for about 15 years but these days i don't really run to break any records or mm like compete against anyone or myself, it's really, it's thinking space and time for me. I run in a way that's quite metronomic, quite consistent. I'm not trying to push myself. I'm just running in a nice consistent way where I'm not having to think about my body. But by doing that, because the, you know, the unconscious mechanisms can take care of all that. Mm. I can then tap into this beautiful subconscious part of myself where ideas just then start to Mm. flow and emerge. And it's amazing. It's just some of my best thinking time. Mm. So there's a variety of different ways, but speaking is absolutely number one. But in the absence of having someone there, you know, writing this stuff down and just free writing. Mm. So just having five minutes and just, writing without stopping without judging it without trying to edit it or like curate your thinking just free writing and then getting curious and going back and saying oh what, what what's emerged there or um, getting curious about what new thinking has emerged because what you find meditation as well meditation being able to practice that meditation is a practice of observing our thoughts and letting them go coming back to a centering point, having a central point of focus and attention. And when we get carried away with our thoughts again, coming back to that central point, this is why in meditation, it's why we use the breath or Mm. it's why some people would use a mantra. It's it's about having a center point to come back to that allows you to maintain focus. Really, that's what meditation is. But when people get started, hey... I was, I was saying I've been taking copious notes. <laughs> Good. But yeah, what when people get why people find meditation difficult is because when you just started, it's like you your mind is a as a big bottle of coke or fizz, some sort of fizzy juice, and it's mm. been shaking and shaking and shaking. And when you stop, it's like you've just opened the lid and all the Broth, the thoughts are just flowing. They're coming and they're coming, they're coming, come, 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 come. Eventually the mind settles, but most people don't sit with it enough, yeah, long enough to yeah. get to that calmer state. It's just it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. I think that centerpiece is a is a great tip because when I've tried meditating, my mind tends to wander. Mm, then which it, is perfectly okay and natural. Okay. But you kind of don't, if you're not 
the experience in with meditation you kind of I think it's a little bit naive I guess it's maybe not naivety it's, like, it's a lack of education around it because you ultimately assume I'm not doing this properly I'm not I should be in this you're judging it yeah I sh- yeah I should be in this state of calm where I've getting all these amazing sensations and we it's almost we expect immediate gratification or or there to be an immediate impact so if we don't sense that then we kind of think we might not be meditating very long yeah I, I'm um, I'm conscious uh, around the time of your time so I've got a few more questions if I may so yeah so, we can go as long as you want by the way because I'm loving this okay so, so so am I so am I so what I wanted to do is ask you around because this is a question I'm dying to ask you around the coaching and mm. the music so if you mm. can tell us about the blend so if somebody I'm sure everybody's been asking been dying for me to ask that question how does that work so I'll, I'll take you back to when I first created or I guess it wasn't just creating. It, <clears throat> I honestly felt like I channeled something. So back to that experience with Rich Litvin, I immediately after I had my first COVID jab and it knocked me for six for a week. And then I had an accident where I think I fainted during the night. I got up oh. to go and get some water and I passed out and I knocked myself out. Was that after the COVID jab? Yeah, it was like a week later. And either I either slipped in water in the dark or or I or I fainted, but I smashed my face. Oh, wow. Really bad concussion, almost split my lip all the way through. Um mm. cut on the nose. And so my my rest time between the COVID vaccine and recovering from that was about a month. And and Rich Litvin has one of these mantras which is slow down to speed up and I'd never really Mm. understood it until I got that experience I got an experience of slowing down and in that space of slowing down these answers started to merge about how I could combine music and coaching I literally started to get visions which was crazy I've never experienced that before I was out running I could see myself in these different experiences like one was a festival tent hosting what appeared to be like a silent disco it was mad And it wasn't until I started to think practically about what it could mean to go by music and coaching. And I had a few conversations with some people that I'd met, other coaches, and I'd written a series of articles about music that was meaningful to me because there were specific songs that connected me to past experiences. And I was starting to build a picture of, okay, music has, it's like a transportation device. When we hear a certain song, it immediately takes us back into that space and time. But it re- we re-embody the feeling of what it felt to be in that space and time, having that experience. And I thought there's something, it's like automatic. This, It's inevitable. We can't do anything about it. Just we hear the song and then we go there. Yeah. And I thought there's something in that then. There's something <clears throat> that I could potentially utilize in this inevitable way that music takes us into these experiences and we re-embody them. And at the same time, I wondered if music has this ability to anchor us into past experiences, I wonder then if I could use music in the same way, looking into the future. So I thought I could create an experience where someone goes away and curates a playlist of songs that connects them to past meaningful experiences. And I could also use visualization to place someone into a state of imagining themselves at a point in time where they don't feel limited, where they've really stepped into their potential and paint this incredibly vivid picture for them about who they're being and more importantly, how it feels to be this version of themselves. Because I could see that people think about a place to get to and, and, and achievements and goals and things they want to create. Really, what all we're ever looking for is the feeling that that's going to give us. That's all we're looking for. We're looking for the feeling that that 
is going to create when we get there. And I could then see, well, we can create that feeling right now by creating that achievement, that place, that space and time where they're being that person, where they're having those experiences. So I started to invite people to test this with me. And the lady who did this with me first time out, we had, I mean, the whole experience absolutely blew both of our minds. We're both experienced coaches and she's an incredible author, um, activist, humanitarian. Um, She's one of the most remarkable people I've ever met. She's been through sexual abuse. She was the only person at one time in the Gaza Strip when all Westerners had left. Mm -hmm. She went to Colombia on her own as a single 20, early 20s German lady to go and help communities during the height of the drug wars. Like, unbelievable remarkable human being, amazing. right? And so I invited her to go away and create a playlist of songs as a guide. I said between three and five, and but have one song that represents a past painful experience. Have one song that represents a past loving or connected experience. And have one song that represents a past joyful or awesome experience. And what I could start to see in these experiences was the preparation was just as important as the actual time we spent together because people were going away and they were starting to step into vulnerability. They were starting to experience nostalgia. They were starting to reconnect with memories and experiences and music. And the music was just automatically doing that. There wasn't any effort. The only effort was thinking and sort of sensing the music and then making that connection to the experiences. Or some people do it the other way around. They're thinking about past experiences that relate to those emotions and thinking about songs that are present for them at that time. So people do it in different ways. But that first experience we shared, she said at the end of the call, I have never experienced anything like that in my life. That is one of the most remarkable things I've ever done. Like we created such amazing transformation in her in that experience because she was very linear in the way that she experienced life. She was very focused on mental progress, very rational, very goal orientated, which kept her protected because of what she'd experienced when she was younger, sexual abuse. But she was missing on these different dimensions of her experience. She was avoiding feeling. But she was able to basically process grief and experience grief. And the way she described it was the music gave her something to hold on to when we went into these spaces of of feeling and really challenging feelings. And one of my gifts is being able to very comfortably sit with raw emotions with people and, and almost hold their hand virtually by allowing them to feel whatever is there for them to feel that they've not felt or been avoiding feeling. So the, what, the experience became this unbelievably expansive experience where people were able to expand in their heart, in their soul, in their feeling, their being, but also expanding in their mind as well, because people were coming to these incredible realizations, like Claire that I did this with, she was able to remember when she was in in her early teens, she used to swim competitively. And she remembered for the first time in sort of nearly 30 years that her swimming teacher used to constantly tell her, you're never going to be good enough. You're never going to be good enough. You're not going to be as good as the other girls. And she carried that with her her whole adult life. And it shaped her experience. And in realizing that, she was able to let go of it and totally step into this essentially new version of herself. She said that it completely changed her life. And that was a two-hour conversation. And this is what I'm experiencing time and time and time again, people having these unbelievable insights, deep, profound realizations of how they've been holding themselves back, how they've been keeping themselves safe, experiencing more of who they are, because through music, we're able to get really present and have a beautiful shared experience beyond the ego, beyond judgment, beyond titles, beyond anything that is just our innate way of being. 
Yeah. And the music is a conduit to engage this and really take people to a place where, because I it, it really makes sense that, because music is kind of, it's not, it doesn't take sides. It, and and, and it, it's quite, when I think about music, like, it, you know, if, if there's a particular artist or a particular song, I can reference that to a mood or to a place that I was in, in my life at that time. Uh, and it just takes me to that place. And once mm. I'm in that place, it's almost like a time ship. Yeah. Like going like back to the future of Michael J. Fox. If I think about a particular record, I'm transported back there. And I it's, it's almost like a little bit like, maybe not like meditating, but it, it takes me there. And I've almost left where I've left where I am now this desk and I'm thinking about that music and maybe what I was going through at that time and who and maybe something significant and yeah so so it totally makes sense absolutely because our present limitations are rooted in past experiences Mm. particularly our limiting beliefs because our limiting beliefs emerge through an experience or a set of experiences most of the time when we were growing up but they can happen as an adult as well. And what we've done is we have chosen to believe a thought that then we believe is true. And it's there to protect us. Mm. But ultimately, it's a limitation in our present experience as a grown adult. And this is such a huge part of what I do is helping people to see the truth, which is They've Mm. chosen to believe these thoughts and why music is especially powerful is music. Well, in, in coaching or in any helping profession, what's generally happening is the, the helper is talking to the person's thinking brain. And this is where most of the resistance is. By using music, you get to bypass this. You take someone into their body, into a more felt experience. And in that place, you can be more playful with them and be more nurturing and more empathetic with them and love them through whatever resistance they are feeling so that they can move through it finally and deal with it. Yeah. And... So carry on. And I've I've had people, someone I did this with, he his cousin had died three days beforehand. I didn't know this when we got together. And this is a guy that I trained with and I'd known and loved, Jerry. He's from Glasgow, amazing banter, sense of humor. And his cousin was like a brother. They were that close. And he'd questioned whether or not he should go ahead. And afterwards he said, that it's possibly the most impactful and greatest experience he's ever had because it allowed him to really process the grief he was feeling in a way that he just wouldn't have done if we hadn't done that Mm -hmm. together. And that was so incredibly humbling for Mm -hmm. me to know that I've been able to contribute so significantly to someone's life experience. And this, like, it gets me all the time i feel the emotion of it imagine it's an emotion of gratitude and and love and um and and i just i'm blown away that i get to experience this constantly and part of my curiosity over the last couple of years is i've been actively out in the world looking for people who are doing this trying to see if there's anyone else doing this. And the closest I've come is literally in the last couple of weeks, I found a lady called Susan Drum. She's over in the US. I think she's in Arizona. She's got a book called um, Your Leadership Playlist. And she's using music. But the key difference, having listened to her book, is that she's using coaching first. And she's using coaching to move people into these spaces of wondering about their limiting beliefs and where they're rooted in past experiences and exploring that first. So she's talking to the the mind first, and then she's getting people to attach songs to those experiences and then to recreate a new feeling that they want to create and getting them to create a song or make an attachment to a song 
that way. Whereas what I'm doing is more intuitive and it's coming more naturally, which is why I'm experiencing such rapid transformations with people because it's coming from a more felt place, more intuitive. And the, the resistance is just totally removed. It's just resistance in the moment to feeling, but by just sitting with it with someone and loving them in that way and serving them and allowing them, not not allowing them to get out of it, just being with them to move through it is just one of the most remarkable things I've ever experienced. And I think will ever experience in my life. No, but it sounds phenomenal and just, it must be quite interesting as well when you have conversations with people and it must be incredibly profound when you see how, because you're, I'm sure in many cases, you're aware of that music as well when they're referencing the music and you can, and you experience how that piece of music impacts them at that period of their life. So that must be in, an incredible experience to mm to witness that and observe that yeah it's i see it all the time and i see it after every experience that this was such a privilege it is a consistent yeah, totally. privilege because it's sacred this is sacred work people are trusting me with the deepest darkest parts of themselves they are trusting me with parts of themselves that they've yeah, never shown the world they've never shared with any other human being that is there's so much privilege in that that I just don't ever yeah, take for granted. It is amazing. And, and also as well, which to me appears quite interesting as well, that before they engage with you, they may have never connected the dots either in terms of that music and how that's impacted them. And that, so you're kind of, it's even, it's more intimate than that because you're, they're going into their archives to, to resonate with a piece of music for a specific period of their life, they're connecting the dots with you and they're going through this transformation, transformation experience with you. So it's discovery, 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 transformation, 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 all at the same time. So that is, that is incredibly powerful. Mm. Um, it's so, it's awe inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. So, Getting towards the end now, what I yeah. wanted to ask you is thank you so much for this amazing conversation. <laughs> One thing is we definitely have to do another episode <laughs> because there's just not enough hours in a day to continue this conversation. And I love, I've loved this conversation. I've loved learning from you. I've written down so many notes. Know, obviously I've got the recording anyway, but I'd like to write down notes at the same time. Perfect. Um, but what I wanted to ask is for people listening, where can they find you if they want to reach out to you want to work with you want to ask you more questions what, what what does that look like so my website will hopefully be up and running by the time this is published and that is discodavewin.com okay. i've got a podcast coming out which is called deeper than disco which is initially a series of conversations with people who've done what i call this yeah. experience of music mapping yeah. with me there's a subsequent series that's going to come out which are actual live recordings of the experience oh, so it's going to be a, in a way a little bit of a blend of desert island discs yeah the old the classic bbc radio show the the vulnerability of what i see in the dire of a ceo podcast and and live coaching yeah. so i'm super excited about all sounds of amazing. that coming out thanks so, man. so definitely send me the links to yes. those so I definitely love to put those in the show notes. So, so we can, they, so website, we'll, we'll get a link to your podcast when that comes out. So people yeah. can access that. And those are the best ways to get to contact you, right? Yeah. And LinkedIn as well. Um, okay. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. That's where I've got kind of my biggest community. Okay. So yeah, those are the main places. Okay. All right. Okay. Amazing. And okay. So recurring question. Mm. If you could invite three inspirational people for dinner, alive or past, who would you invite? Mm. Hmm. The first two come pretty easy. And I'm a big Liverpool fan. 
So, and Jurgen Klopp for me is one of the most incredible leaders, mm. charismatic, real, authentic, energetic. And also we share the same birthday, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, he's He would be number one. Um, there's a there's a gentleman in the US uh, who goes by the moniker the ultimate coach called Steve Hardison. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've had the opportunity to uh, be in his presence, um, but I would absolutely this this is someone who embodies love, is love, is one of the most rare examples I found of someone who genuinely is love and is service. Um, and I want to spend some time with him at some point. It's a big investment to work with him. And it's on my bucket list. It's part of my ambition to go and invest in, in working with him. And hmm, a third person. You know what? I didn't have an immediate answer. And I don't think I've got a specific person. I would love to dig up in fact you know what i've been really curious about um some ideas that an an author called graham hancock has presented to the world he's got a series called ancient apocalypse and he introduces this idea of an ancient civilization that was wiped out by some cataclysmic event and i would it would either be him or i would be able to get someone from 11,000 plus years ago, if there is intelligent, advanced human life. And I would love to have a being from that point in human history be part of that as well. That that would be amazing. amazing. (laughs) So so, suggestion, should we choose Graham Hancock for now? And then the next episode that I do with you, that put that prehistoric plastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Graham Hancock would be an amazing part. Like those three. Yeah. I mean, the just the diversity in that conversation would be absolutely mind blowing. It sounds it. It sounds it. That would be a dream. One day I need to grow the <laughs> podcast, get get more and to publicize it and make one of these happen. Yours are still alive, right? What are yours? Yeah, still? they're all still alive. Yeah. 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 Obviously, we know. You. So yeah. So so that's a challenge for me. Get big, big, awesome. big. Get, you know, reach Jurgen Klopp, Graham Hancock, and then hopefully we can get one of these ones to happen, one of these dinners to happen. It's possible. This man. Disco Dave Wynn, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure, an education, inspirational. What you know, what more can I say? It's been fantastic. Can I ask you a question? Certainly can. What's been your biggest insight or learning in this conversation? Mm, good question. You know, that there's been loads, there's been loads. <laughs> there's been loads. So many. Um, you know what? I was going to give you a different answer, but actually there's been loads. But the main one is the, the music and the way that you're able to work with your clients to get them to deal with different specific challenges in their lives by using music. That is remarkable. That's remarkable. But there's been so many remarkable pieces in this discussion that that is the one that stands out for me. Awesome. That's the one that stands out to me. I love the bounce back ability. So not the bounce back ability, sorry, the bounce back two as well aligned mm. with creativity that powerful as well because i think when we talk about bouncing back people just talk about bouncing back we don't talk about bouncing back too mm. and i think if we do it with creativity intention purpose then then there's it, it's just when we do things with purpose and intention then we're really leaning into who we are and, we, and really what we want to do and not just being reactive and bouncing back with no real direction and, and then invariably we will subside again. But to answer your question, it definitely would be if I had to pick one particular 
point, it definitely would be the coaching blended with music for your clients, which is remarkable. And I was going to suggest to you off the recording, but I'll say on the recording that please do a TEDx talk around this. <laughs> mm. Please do that. I I would love to. It's it's that it's um it's also on my list of ambitions as well. They would be all over it. They would be all mm. over it. Hundred one yeah. hundred percent. So definitely do that. But and um, if I could just speak to the listener as well, yeah, absolutely. I'd I'd also invite you, the listener, to consider that question too. What's been your biggest insight from yeah, this conversation? Absolutely. Yeah, and I invite you to reach out to us and share that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah good point good point yeah definitely definitely that you know what there has been so many i will enjoy listening to this and you when you were talking uh talking quite early into the conversation we've been speaking a while but quite early i was thinking that this could almost be my i don't know just a my own i don't know piece of meditation there was so much could be a piece of meditation piece of inspiration of so many different facets we've covered i love the bit you spoke about meditation and and how we can center when mm. we, when our mind wanders which it does when i've mm. tried meditating my mind does wander and and then i become i don't know if frustrated frustrated is the right word but i guess i think i'm not doing it properly mm. so the idea of choosing a point centering then coming back that totally makes sense to me awesome totally makes sense to me if i talk for another 10 minutes there'll be other things that come out <laughs> as well as as i as i as i recall with my memory no uh, doubt, recalls. Man. but I, honestly it's been fabulous and i definitely would love to do another conversation with you because it, it really has been fantastic so thank you so much me too, man. Thank you. Thank you for your great questions. And I've loved this. This is, again, this is such a joy and privilege to be able to share all of this, like to be able to share what I've learned, what I'm learning, to serve other people. Like This is what I'm all about. It's all about you know, being able to make a positive, meaningful contribution to others. So I really love you and appreciate you for this opportunity as well. No, no, I, I it's been fantastic. I, I love the fact that you've that you've you've just been very open shared so much i love your journey as well so there's there's so much there's so many elements to this that that you've shared and it's been it's a rich experience for me rich for the listeners and i think i particularly love the fact that that from talking to you people listening they they i'm sure they've got that picks up the same thing you totally love what you're doing you're totally engaged to the idea of loving what you do Another piece that, that came to come to this is my last bit, but another thing that comes to mind about the idea of being selfish to ourselves, we shouldn't feel guilty about that because that's going to give us the opportunity to be more impactful, more powerful, to serve mm. our loved ones, our families, our friends, our work colleagues, our nearest and dearest, even random people that we see on the street that were just more were just more helpful and more aware when we engage people I don't think we really think about that it's something for me to think about as well because I think that can get lost in old habits so yeah so powerful mm. but mm. thank you so much My pleasure. and we've got to thank the listeners so thank you everybody for tuning in to this episode of My Perfect Failure we're always looking to grow the show so please do share this episode far and wide particularly if you know people that are looking to transform their lives maybe they've experienced adversity and maybe they're not thinking that there are gifts there but clearly there are gifts there this episode really is testament to that and your feedback is most welcome so we're keen to hear about things you like and equally things you don't like so anything you don't like or things you like you can find me at paul at myperfectradio.com or you can find me via the contact page on the website so until the next time take care for now thanks for listening to my perfect failure podcast be sure to visit www.myperfectfailure.com to join the conversation subscribe to our podcast on itunes or google play look out for our next episode